you know, I mean, the reality is the reality, and and businesses do have to make sure that they're they're sustainable. How do you approach right sizing your business in a, in an economic downturn like this? I mean, you've got HR issues, you've got to do things. What, what, what are what, how, what do you recommend? How do you how do you approach that? Yeah, well, there's. I mean, you've got to look at you got to look at your basically your 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 profit and loss statement. You got to look at where all your expenses come from. So obviously, the uh, non-essential stuff or the stuff that you want to you know cut right away. I don't know if you have events, golf tournaments, um, even some marketing, um, non-essential uh, marketing. Those type of things are that's what usually you cut right away. Um, and then the other ones are a little bit more trickier because you have a lot of fixed costs, like things like that you can't get out of, like rents. Um, again, I'm hearing that, um, given what's going on, that, uh, there's some government help there, or there's potentially dealing with your, with your landlord. Um, you know, we've done that. And, and as long as you're in communication and, uh, you know, you're not going to get free rent, but at least you can postpone it. Uh, I think so reaching out to your landlords and getting that kind of relief helps. Usually that's what you can't do, but a lot of, even if you got to go dark and in, in, in a place and just pay the rent, but at least you cut all the other expenses that go with space and the most delicate one which is usually the heaviest cost is your is your actual is your staff is your headcount so again this one is unique where the government uh, seems as if they're stepping up and providing a, a lot of relief to individuals and businesses so that that's a good thing um but at the end of the day you still you know you at some point you still got to walk in there and, and, and you know potentially lay off people hopefully temporarily so it's important to do that obviously with dignity and positivity and you know we're fortunately we haven't really had to do that at wish but uh we've had a little bit and and so we're just just communicating just keep keeping in touch uh keeping everyone's spirits high this is short term we're going to get back at it it's going to be better than ever and and i think it will because usually when you do come out of these things there is a lot of pent-up demand because you got to get you know you got to get things going again um so it's just again it's a it's a matter of just being really humane about it and uh and staying positive through it. I mean, positivity makes a big difference uh, in your life and in your business life as well. But you've got to be honest with yourself now and be safer than sorry. Uh, you know, like I know it, it's everything screeches to a halt, and what I'm saying just makes you know makes the economy worse um, because obviously if people keep spending, then we keep we keep going. But uh, you know, we're, especially if we're talking about uh, uh, younger entrepreneurs. Or early stage businesses, no, you can't take that risk. It's different if you're a Fortune 500, a very large company with billions of dollars in their war chest. That's different. But um, if you're a bootstrapper, you've got to you, you got to you got to cut that burn down to next to nothing as much as you can. That's great. Um, let's talk a little bit about vendors. Uh, do I want to talk about and maybe banks as well? How so? Let's let's start with um, you know how you approach times like this. Uh, your, your vendors. What you know? You've got some relationships. Um, like what, what are you doing in, in, in tough times in terms of, of dealing with your vendors? Yeah, communication is key there as well. I mean, they know, you know, they know, they know they're probably in a similar boat, and they, you know, and, and as are we with our clients. Um, but communication is key, right? Like even obviously if, if you have customers and they're the ones that are actually being open and honest and telling you what they can do and if they can do nothing versus the ones that are avoiding you, obviously, you know, you, you tend to lean towards helping those that are being in communication. So same thing with your vendors. Um, I think you want to kind of be open and honest with them as far as you know, your priorities and you want to, you know, you want, you want, you got to, you don't want to be cut off. So uh, whether it's making adjustments, letting them know that, listen, you're going to, anything you possibly can do to get to them, you're going to get to them. You might, you know, you might not be current, obviously during this period. And I think they know that, you know, it's like landlords right now. They know that they're going to get some tenants that aren't going to be able to pay the rent. Um, so, and you know, this is, this also lets you know if you've got the right vendor, because this is, these are the times, uh, in good times, everybody can provide you great service. The key of picking the right partners is when things are, are difficult, just like in your, in your life relationships, your friends, your spouse, um, in good times, they, oh, everyone's around, Every, everyone's a great friend in great times. But you know, it's it, when you're, when you're going through something difficult, who's there? Who's there to support you and uplift you and get you through it? And, and, and in business, your vendors and your and your clients, those are those relationships that are key. So um, I can't stress enough about just being in great communi in communication, getting ahead of it as much as you possibly can. And, you know, even if it's just a matter of giving them a little bit as you go, just to kind of keep showing them that you're committed. 
because they're afraid too. If they, if, if they think you're going to, if you're on the brink of going, you know, under or bankrupt, then they might just discontinue your service. You don't want to do that. And that's why you want to communicate. You want to get them, even if it's a bunch of small amounts, uh, that would just, that would, that would just show that you're, that would just be a good gesture, good faith that you're trying to get through it. And you're not hogging the money at their expense because they're, they, you know, they're not there to be your bank. When, you know, in, in times like this, um, I guess it's important to, you know, communicate and be in touch with, with, with your bank. What are some of the issues and, and uh, what are the, some of the types of conversations uh, an entrepreneur uh, should be thinking about having with, with uh, uh, you know, their bankers or anyone that's financing them? Again, communication is key. So we've done that already. We've got ahead uh, listed our, each of our businesses, all the struggles, uh, the challenges we're seeing and the opportunities we're seeing and communicating what we're doing. Uh, not just talking numbers at this point. At this point, we're actually talking tactical, what we're doing in our business. It's just this gives you a chance to actually build a lot of credibility with your banker. Because, um, you know, don't forget, they've got a list of, you know, who knows, on average, I think they deal with 100 uh, businesses, uh, a senior account manager at a, a commercial bank. So they can see the difference of their 100 um, customers who's, who are good operators and who aren't. And what's considered a good operator, are those guys that are transparent, those ones that are in communication, even if it's bad news that you're communicating, at least they see that you're communicating, let them know what you're doing, um, how you're taking advantage of it, how you're cutting your costs, um, and, the, and the challenges you foresee, and then ask them what they could do. And again, fortunately, right now with this particular crisis, there is a little bit of help. Uh, I believe uh, banks are automatically, uh, I think you have to qualify uh, as far as if, you, if you're year over year, you're off 30% in your top line, but if you are, then um, or I don't even know if they do. I think banks are just offering a 40,000 inches free loan. If you pay it back before 2022, 10,000 is forgivable. So that's free money, um, which is rare from a bank. And uh, we're seeing them extending the lines of credits for at least 10% interest free, things like that, uh, delaying interest payments. So the banks are there to help you. They don't want you, they don't want your loan to go bad. Um, and uh, they do have a lot of resources and, um, you know, and you're seeing things like interest rates dropping and things like that. So um, you'll get through it. But again, the, the the message here, I think the underlying message between everything that we've been discussing is just getting ahead of it and being a great communicator. You're seeing that even with leaders of countries, right? If you look back uh, throughout history, not just now or 9-11, uh, they call them wartime presidents. Or, it's always, whether it's a war or any type of tragedy, it was Mayor Giuliani in 9-11, those that were great communicators, that set everybody at ease, that focused on your action, that got everybody focused on their action, their attitude, and how to block and tackle to get through things, those are the ones that go down in history as being uh, regarded as great leaders. Uh, and uh, and in, in the business world, uh, these type of downturns uh, are, are where you get to shine as a, as a business leader.